Well, there isn't any doubt that the EIS experience had a profound effect on my professional career. Here I was, an internist, infectious disease doc, largely trained in the diagnosis and treatment of individual patients with bacterial infections. I was introduced to the CDC, went to the state of Rhode Island, got involved in measles elimination, and for the rest of my career, I've been involved with vaccines, prevention, and uh, just general public health and social equity. I did have the experience that I think every officer has of shock when I first submitted a written report and it came back and it was the classic EIS first draft. Across the top was written, great start. And then after that, I don't know if there were three words consecutive that didn't have some sort of red ink spilled on it. My most memorable moment of the last two years was probably my first day on the job. We put out an EpiX alert about lung injury and vaping in Wisconsin, and my phone was flooded with calls from state health officers and state epidemiologists wanting more details, and I had no idea what I was doing. I wanted to tell them, I don't even know where to park yet, um, but I knew as an EIS officer, I had the trust and support of my peers and that we would figure it out, and we did. Two years that made such a huge impact on my professional life. I came to CDC to do the EIS program thinking I would stay for two years and ended up being a CDC employee for, for 20 years and having a wonderful uh, career. The opportunities that you get as an EIS officer to understand the broad world of public health is unparalleled. And one of the other wonderful things about EIS is the great friendship that you make and friendship that I have carried with me for decades and continue to be close to many of the people who were my EIS classmates or colleagues in EIS. It's uh, a life-changing experience. There's really no better way to get experience in the variety and stress and fun and detail of public health and have more opportunities for your career than through EIS. As an EIS officer, I've been able to work in different sections of the, of the response and that has offered me a lot of opportunities to learn. Besides increasing my network of friends and colleagues, um, I think I had a great experience and I am a better epidemiology now. One of the most amazing experiences during EIS was the opportunity to deploy with my classmates to Ground Zero in response to the 9-11 terrorist attack. I also had an additional opportunity that was lent to my son because he was only six weeks old and actually traveled with me on that airplane um, with my EIS classmates um, to Ground Zero and to New York City. I was fortunate given my family was living in nearby Connecticut and was able to care for him, but it was a pretty amazing experience. And I'm pretty sure he was one of the few babies that traveled in the air during that time. Security had really changed, of course, after the attacks. And unfortunately, TSA snatched his little nail clippers, baby nail clippers, just in case, uh, as they were concerned about safety during that time. The other thing that was really wonderful about the experience was, of course, my classmates. We were incredibly connected and supported each other, not only in the terms of um, our, our responses, but we also supported each other through our EIS careers. Successful EISOs are adaptable and flexible, but have you thought about how adaptable and flexible the EIS program is? When the program began 70 years ago, officers were male medical doctors. That has certainly changed. I began EIS with an infant and was concerned about pumping breast milk during the program. Two of my classmates were in the same position. Imagine three women, all with PhDs, starting EIS with infants and needing to pump. The EIS program was incredibly accommodating and let us pump with our covers in the back of our training sessions so we could fully participate in our training while also feeding our babies. I doubt the original EIS officers could have imagined this scenario, but I'm grateful that the program is so adaptable and flexible. My daughter's nearly two and a half now, and we're still nursing. The EIS program support played an important role in my breastfeeding journey and in helping me identify ways to make my life as a working mom work for me. I can't think of any professional experience in my life that's had more impact on my career 
you know, me personally than my time in, in EIS. Uh, EIS is where I fell in love with public health, uh, with government service, with epidemiology, and my wife. I actually met my wife on my first outbreak as a first year EIS officer, investigating an outbreak of hemolytic uremic syndrome in children up in Massachusetts. Um, I was up there for two months and when it was over, um, uh, Jeannie, who was going to be, who I eventually married, moved back to Atlanta with me and uh, we've lived happily ever after. My years in EIS changed my life. From the beginning, it was about the people, my mentors in public health. For example, I disappeared into the wilderness in Maine for a week, investigating an E. coli 0157H7 outbreak among Boy Scouts, and didn't know I was supposed to keep in communication with my supervisor, Dr. Patty Griffin, who forgave me, teaching me mercy. But she later took out her emotions through 22 drafts of the manuscript. In EIS, I also investigated reptile and amphibian associated salmonella, including swabbing cloacae in pet stores throughout the San Francisco Bay Area. To this day, my presence strikes fear into the hearts of snakes and turtles throughout the country. And when I made a mistake in the calculations in the manuscript, it was picked up and corrected by Dr. Rob Tokes, teaching me attention to detail. My second year, I went to Tajikistan for a multi-drug resistant typhoid fever outbreak of 10,000 people during a civil war and sampled water from a sewage processing plant with Les Roberts, teaching me that all jobs with meaning are good jobs in public health. And during EIS, I fell in love with another officer. We have two children and we had the chance following EIS to work in Uganda and Kenya together for 10 years. We are now both happily working at CDC, teaching me, if you're interested in having an outstanding long-term relationship and would like to have two delightful children, I would highly recommend EIS. The ability as program director to provide opportunities for young professionals to experience the world of public health, often for the first time. You know, for many of you, EIS served as a pivotal experience that changed your whole career trajectory from uh, clinical medicine or straight academic paths to a focus on service and population health. Now I know that because that's exactly what happened to me. I was a clinician working at an Indian Health Service clinic when I first heard about EIS at a high school reunion. I met the husband of one of my classmates who was also a PHS doc, but he was said he was assigned to the Epidemic Intelligence Service. I'd never heard of that. That husband was Gus Burkhead, EIS 85, and his enthusiasm about the program prompted me to apply, and my life changed forever. My kids basically grew up as a part of EIS and at the EIS conferences, and I also made many wonderful lasting friendships and uh, ended up getting a job or two um, from attending those conferences. So. I sure hope to get to see all of my friends and colleagues in person next year. And until then, congratulations on 70 years and cheers to the next 70. EIS has really helped me serve our country during a time filled with major health threats, including Ebola and SARS-CoV-2 virus outbreaks. And it gave me new amazing friends that brought a sense of togetherness during these unprecedented virtual times. So thank you EIS um, and happy 70th. Happy, 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 happy,